Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey, and uh, I'm running late on my vlog this week. I may get this out Friday night. I try to post these Friday at four o'clock, and then any other videos that I have over the weekend will either be Saturday at 7 a.m. or Sunday at 7 a.m., but I'm running late. We've had sunshine this week, and I've been doing field work, bee work, uh, just work work. Um, I actually did have a uh, side job work to do today, so that was that was good. That pays money, um, <laughs> which is good. Uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of bee work, and that's good, but building nukes and rearing queens and, and all this stuff is it's not going to pay me anything this year. It's going to pay next year. Uh, there's really a, a two-year cycle on, on uh, hives. You know, if you get started early enough in the spring, I can make honey from a nuke if I really push them hard and I start them out strong. But it's a whole lot easier to start a nuke in the spring and have them ready to go into winter strong and heavy and then make honey next year. So it's just sort of how it is. I've been doing a lot of work, but it's not going to generate a lot of cash flow this year. So. So this week, uh, we are into black locust and tulip poplar. That is both flowing. I'd say both of them are, tulip poplar may not be peaked yet. It'll bloom about three weeks, but it's, it's close to peak. And black locust, I'd say, has hit peak. Uh, we don't have a lot of black locust, but there's enough to make a difference. Um, just east of us, there's quite a few black locusts where you can actually make a crop of pure black locust honey. It's sort of a lemony yellow, very floral, high quality table honey, uh, good stuff. Uh, tulip poplar, we've got a ton of tulip poplar. It doesn't bear heavily every year, but it does good. And uh, it's a good honey too, it's really good. So going on this week, I did another round of grafting. I uh, grafted 45 uh, cups, and I think I'm gonna have 34, 35 take. So that give me about a 75% getting better at that. And um, I pulled excluders um, <laughs> on a lot of my honey production hives. I got them into four mediums and making honey, you know, past swarm, swarm season, making honey and put an excluder on top and put a drawn fifth, drawn comb fifth. And 75% of the bees are not wanting to move through that excluder to work the drawn comb in the fifth. So um, I pulled a bunch of excluders this week. I'm hoping I've got enough of a honey band in the fourth that the queen won't want to move up into the fifth. And then I'll just deal with it in June, uh, shake the bees down or whatever I have to do to get them down below that fourth and put an excluder in uh, uh, between the third and fourth box. And I'll be able to harvest pure honey the, the second go round in July. So I'll just have to deal with that in, in future years uh you know my thoughts on excluders at, at the moment are they work great if you are constricting the brood nest like i've got some hives that are in a double medium and if they're pretty strong and they're in a double medium they'll go through an excluder to, to work up especially if you give them drawn comb and you can make a lot of honey like that it, it's like a bunch of people will, will run a single deep with an excluder and then put honey supers on top of that um, if, if you constrict the brood nest and use an excluder that works well, they'll work through it and get used to it and keep going. But my experience is with these big hives, like a, you know, a double deep, uh, four medium size brood chamber where the queen has free reign, and you put an excluder on the top, put a box of drawn comb on top of that, they're just like, eh, we don't need to work up there. We've got plenty of room down here. So they just don't go through the excluder unless they fill out the bottom of the box and then they're either going to swarm or they're going to work up. Um, and I don't want them to be making a decision on that. I just want them to work up. So I pulled a bunch of excluders out and um, in the future, I don't think I'm going to use them until I do my first honey harvest. I also got into the honey house this week, uh, bought some 10 gauge, uh, 10, 10, three wire. So I'm gonna run a couple of 240 volt outlets and I don't even think I'm gonna put the outlets in. I'm just gonna put them in a box and put a cover plate over it. That way when I buy whatever down the road that is gonna run on 240, I can match my receptacle to the 
plug on the piece of equipment I get, but um, I'll have it I'll have it plumbed in there and ready to go. Um, I'll just have to wire it and get the receptacle and wire it. So I got to get that finished up. I did get one panel put up in the ceiling. Uh, was not totally happy with the process, but got the first one in and the first one is oftentimes the hardest on a project. You learn a lot doing the first one and then you can uh, make the rest of them go easier. So hopefully next week I'll get back in there. I, I've just been really busy with hive work this week. I've had some hives trying to swarm, I'm grafting, I'm trying to stay ahead with supers, I'm uh, checkerboarding nukes and you know equalizing nukes to keep them from swarming. It's been it's been unreal, unreal. I've been setting up new bee yards, um, getting ready to move hives. I've moved some hives to greener pastures this week. I'll talk about that for a second. So, I had like 16 or 17 production colonies at my home yard, and then I've got two drone flooding yards that are about a, a mile and a third away, one that direction and one that direction, and uh, both of those were filling supers like really really well and to give you an idea of the flow my uh, my bee club president dick brickner i've done a couple videos with him he's got uh, i think it's called brood minders that basically a hive on scales and it sends data every day uh, to his cell phone or his wife's cell phone since he doesn't have one so uh, he's actually had hives gaining you know four pounds a day uh, the, earlier this week so you know that'd be 28 30 pounds a week which is nearly a, a full medium um, so a medium a week is, is pretty pretty good flow you know there's a lot of places that you can get heavier than that but there's a lot of places you can get worse than that too so we're on a we're on a pretty good honey flow right now and bees have been really working in these two drone flooding yards I've got six hives a piece in those and 16 or 17 in my home yard and I didn't need near as many supers in my home yard uh, they just weren't filling up as quickly and it's very similar I mean it's just a mile and a third away so it's pretty similar habitat so I decided to move some production colonies out of my home yard and basically scout uh, a, a couple of new out yards so I put a couple big hives in a yard two miles this way and a couple big hives in a yard that's about six miles north and uh, depopulated my home yard a little bit. So I'm gonna scout out those two out yards with a couple of hives, a couple big hives each. I've got some nukes in those and that'll give me an idea of whether they're gonna produce well or not. I think they'll do well, but you never know. So I'll scout them out and then know for next year I've also identified three hives in my home yard that I'm going to break down completely and split them up, just absolve or dissolve the entire hive. Uh, one has been my problem child that uh, has tried to swarm a couple times and they tried to starve in January and they've had too many bees. I've had to pull them back and pull them back and still try to convince them to not swarm. And right now I think they're queenless. I think they've got a virgin running around in there and uh, they're nearly broodless. So I'm gonna bust them down and make splits out of them. And then I had another hive that is a rare story for me. Uh, it was a cell builder earlier in the year. I, I caught them trying to swarm and it was early as in March, they were trying to swarm. And there's an old, older queen in there. I knew that, but um, I made them into a cell builder. I removed all of the queen cells and turned them into a cell builder and when i was done with them building my first round of queen cells i just took the cell builder part and made splits with it and left a small nuke for that old queen to build back up i left her a couple of boxes but there was just some drawn comb in the second box well she built up and i had to put a third box on them and kept feeding them and i, I dipped into them yesterday to see if they would be able to give me some resources for splits and there were swarm cells everywhere in there, capped swarm cells, uh, still a lot of bees. So I knew that they hadn't swarmed yet, but um, I went through 30 medium frames and that old queen was on the very last frame. I found her on the very last frame. She was already skinny. 
They'd been running her around. There were no eggs anywhere in the hive. Uh, they had forced her to quit laying so in preparation for swarming. And I bet that she would have swarmed yesterday afternoon if I had not called her yesterday morning. So I decided uh, to, I did something a little different with her. I, I put her in a Jay-Z Beezy queen cup, queen cage and taped over the exit and just stuck her back in the hive and left her there. So that hive is queen right, but all that brood is gonna age and there won't be anything for them to make emergency cells with when I get ready to make splits. So hopefully they don't try to make emergency queens or do anything uh, weird. And I can just remove that old queen and I know right where she's at, and, you know, they'll take care of her for a week. So we'll see, that seems like a pretty, <laughs> pretty opportune, you know, catch there. I've got some other hives that I don't know if they're gonna make um, honey or not. I know one is requeening. They, they look like they were gonna swarm yesterday, so I cut some cells out of there. I actually heard a virgin piping on a frame while I was holding it, and then I found her. And uh, I think there may have been another virgin in there, but I, I cut everybody else out. And, you know, hopefully they decide not to swarm. Um, I don't know that they've got enough resources to really have that much pressure on them to do that. So we'll see. I did take a cell out of them and put into a, a nuke that went queenless for whatever reason. You know, maybe she died in transport. I, I don't know, she got squished by me. I, I don't know, they were queen right, but now they're not. And uh, they had just about gone laying worker. And I put a, a queen cell in there, so. They may chew that down, I, I don't know. Lane worker hives, in my experience, are pretty difficult to do much with. Um, they get really obstinate uh, towards new queens. And, uh, you know, they think they're queen right. But, um, and so they don't want to accept a, a virgin or a, a mated queen or anything. But in my experience, it's easiest just to either shake them out or merge them with a very strong colony that can then uh, get rid of that laying worker and solve that problem. So coming up next week, I think I am going to be needing a lot of boxes, uh, both for nukes that are growing and for honey production hives. I am out of drawn comb, I am out of parsley drawn comb, and I'm out of honey for last year. So I've completely sold out of everything and uh, don't have any business income coming in until <laughs> I do my first honey harvest this year. So that's where we're at in the season. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that my honey lasted as long as it, as it did, but uh, I did shut down looking for new wholesalers about uh, November of last year because I knew I was going to be able to sell out before my next crop came in. I'd like to say thanks to Charles Carroll. Uh, he actually made a donation to the channel. He donated enough to sponsor a hive, which I thought was a neat idea. He, he uh, threw that out to me and I thought it was kind of a neat idea. Also Doug McClelland and David Ball. I appreciate all the help that you guys are giving me. I really do. All right, so question this week comes from Ronald Lauf and he asks, uh, what are you using for queen excluders and how do you clean them? So I'm using the metal bound excluders and I'm not cleaning them, uh, if that answers your question. So I found that the bees, this one is almost brand new. It's got a little bit of wax on it, but it has not been on a hive for long. I found that the bees seem to put a certain amount of wax on the excluders and then they just stop building wax on it. And uh, Greg Rogers and Bob Benny talk about that in one of, um, one of the videos that um, Bob did with Greg. And I think both of them agreed that you can boil that wax off and put a clean excluder back on a hive the next spring and they build the same amount of wax back. Whereas if you leave the wax on there and put it back on the hive, they don't really add to it. So if that is true, 
then what's the point in cleaning them off? You can just stack them, put them back on the hive the next year and not have to go through the trouble of cleaning them. So that's, that's the assumption that I'm operating under at the moment. That may change at some point, but uh, that's what I'm thinking right now. Second question comes from Paul Santo Nasita. He sent me an email. Uh, he says, are, he's got two questions. He asks, are you able to sell all your honey the year you produce it? Yes, I have been able to so far. Uh, well, within a year after it's produced. You know, I harvest in June and July, and I ran out in um, April. So that's within one year, but it's not the same calendar year. So what, however you want to measure that, you, you can decide for yourself. Are you selling wholesale or retail and at what prices if you're willing to say? I'm selling wholesale and retail. Uh, I'm retailing, it averages about 14 a pound. I'm doing a little bit more for um, a 12 ounce bottle and a little bit less for a 24 ounce bottle per ounce, but it, it's gonna average out about 14 a pound. And then I'm doing a 35% discount to retail. So that's what I'm doing. Question number two, have you and how do you intend to address granulated honey in jars or in buckets? Um, I am, that does happen. If you've got a retailer that doesn't move through honey quickly, then it'll granulate on the shelf and then they want me to swap it out with them for some ungranulated honey. And what I'm doing is I've got uh, good jars and bottles with watertight lids and I have a hot tub that goes to 104 degrees, which is the exact temperature that it takes to um, liquefy granulated honey. And the labels that I'm using are waterproof labels from Sticker Mule. They're very high quality, and I can take bottles or jars of honey and drop them in the, uh, <laughs> I can drop them in the hot tub on my porch and come back two days later and they're perfectly clear and they're at just the right temperature. You know, they never go above that 104, uh, but that is just barely enough to get them to liquefy over some time. So I'm thinking I could do the same thing, the same principle in my honey house just by using a big cooler with an immersion heater and perhaps an Inkbird temperature controller. Um, to keep it at about 104 and then I could uh, liquefy buckets in much the same way just fill the water up in the cooler put two or three buckets in there that would be good for a small scale and then larger scale I'm gonna have to get like a an old commercial refrigerator or freezer or something along those lines and then probably heat it with um uh, I'll probably have to heat it with incandescent light bulbs and then put a muffin fan in it to circulate air. Uh, there's a lot of people who have made contraptions similar to that. I'm not going that route yet though because I'm moving through my honey quick enough that I haven't had to. And I'm going to be hungry for space in my honey house and I don't want to add anything to it unless completely necessary. Um, I've also got the idea that I may add another container and use that as my warming drying room and that would drastically increase the usability of my space uh, and allow me to put some more equipment in the actual honey house. So I, I don't know, longer term I'm kind of up in the air on what I'm going to do with that. You know, there are power blankets and things that you can uh, decrystallized honey with um, but I'm gonna move into drums pretty quick just because I can my honey production is going to increase quite a bit over the next couple of years Lord willing and it's just so much more efficient to store honey in a drum than it is in buckets it's actually more efficient to uh, liquefy honey in a drum than it is in a bucket. I can get a, a Sweeney immersion heater. Uh, call, I think they call it a drum melter or something like that. Also a power blanket for a drum. You let that run two or three days and you've got it 
liquid and you've got 650 pounds, which is enough to you know, fill some orders with. Whereas doing one or two buckets at a time, one or two or three buckets at a time, it takes longer to get less honey liquefied. So those are some thoughts I've got on all that. So channel news, uh, I've got one more video with Corey Stevens that um, will probably be Corey Stevens Unclipped Part 3. Just uh, It's good conversation, good content. I don't have it edited yet. I've been so busy this week. I just have not had time to get it done. I'm going to scramble to get this video done. And these are relatively easy. Um, and then I'm, I'm busy this weekend. We've got um, in-laws coming in and my daughter has got a dance recital that I am filming and I'm going to make DVDs of it and sell them to mothers. So that's got to be my priority over the next couple of days. I, I cannot mess that up or I have so many women mad at me. Oh, that's never a good thing. Never a good thing. So I've got to put my full attention toward that tomorrow. But if I can get that video finished, then I will probably release it Sunday. I'll try to get that done, but it very easily could be next week. And then I've got a bunch of other footage and stuff. I, I just need some rain days. Um, but man, when it's sunny and temperatures are nice and we're on a honey flow, I've got to be out working bees. That's just the way it is. So I'll get caught up at some point. Guys, if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can also send them to info at duckriverhoney.com. I try to answer one or two a week. So I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.